CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 3.1, Given a Scenario, Troubleshoot Common Windows OS Problems. With this video segment, we're kicking off Domain 3, Software Troubleshooting. You've already made amazing progress, working through the ins and outs of the CompTIA A+, Core 2 exam objectives. So, take a moment to appreciate all the hard work you've put in so far. Go ahead, take a deep breath, and give yourself a well-deserved pat on the back. The great news about Domain 3 is that you'll be building on what you've already learned in Domains 1 and 2, so this section should feel like a breeze. Ready to tackle software troubleshooting with confidence? Great! To begin, we will start with the infamous Windows Blue Screen of Death, or BSOD, for short. When the blue screen of death appears, it's the system's way of telling you that a critical error has occurred. It usually comes with a stop code that provides clues about what went wrong. This stop code is your starting point for diagnosing the issue, as it can indicate problems related to drivers, hardware, or the operating system itself. To troubleshoot a BSOD, the first thing you should do is make a note of the stop code displayed on the screen. This code can help identify the type of error and guide your next steps. If the issue started recently, try using System Restore to revert the system to an earlier state, undoing any changes that might have caused the problem. Another common fix is to roll back drivers or updates, as outdated or incompatible updates can trigger BSODs. If new hardware or software was added before the BSOD appeared, remove them to see if the error resolves. You should also ensure that all hardware components and cables are properly connected, as loose connections can cause system failures. Running built-in tools like hardware diagnostics, or check disk to check the integrity of the hard drive, and a malware scan can help rule out hardware faults or malicious software as potential causes. Lastly, don't overlook the possibility of overheating as a root cause. To rule this out, ensure that the system's fans and ventilation are working effectively to maintain safe operating temperatures. Moving on, if your system displays a no OS found message, it's typically due to a boot drive issue. This error suggests that the computer is unable to locate an operating system to start up from. To troubleshoot this issue, first enter the BIOS and verify that the boot drive is recognized. If the drive is not listed, check the physical connections to ensure the drive is properly connected, then try rebooting the system. Next, check the boot order in the BIOS settings to confirm that the correct drive is set as the primary boot device. Additionally, this error can occur if a USB drive or other removable media is left connected during boot, so make sure to remove any unnecessary devices and restart the system. If the issue persists, run a disk diagnostic using tools like Check Disk to identify and repair potential drive errors. You may also need to use OS Loader Repair Tools to fix the boot sector or master boot record. If the drive itself has failed, replacing the drive and re-imaging the workstation with a fresh copy of the operating system may be necessary to restore functionality. Now, let's look at general boot problems, which can range from simple glitches to more serious errors like boot manager is missing or the system failing to load altogether. If possible, start troubleshooting by opening the startup tab in task manager and begin to disable startup items one by one, rebooting after each change. This helps identify if a particular program is causing the issue. If that doesn't help or is not possible, load the system into safe mode. This limited environment allows you to run boot logging, which records driver and service loading during startup. Review the log for any errors that could point to driver issues. If you find any problematic drivers, uninstall or update them. If the problem persists, use Windows Recovery Tools and run Startup Repair to automatically fix common boot issues, such as missing or corrupted system files. If these steps fail, you may need to check the BIOS settings to ensure the correct boot drive is set. For more severe cases, consider re-imaging the workstation to reinstall the OS and clear any lingering software issues. If the system frequently shuts down unexpectedly or exhibits instability, such as freezing, crashing, or erratic behavior, it could be caused by hardware issues, overheating, or malware. Begin by checking the system event logs for error messages that could provide clues about the root cause. Make sure the system has proper cooling and a stable power supply, as overheating or power fluctuations can contribute to shutdowns and instability. 
If the issue persists, consider the possibility of malware disrupting processes, corrupting files, or consuming system resources. Run a full malware scan using up-to-date antivirus software and remove any detected threats. After cleaning the system, reboot to see if stability is restored. If problems continue, it may be necessary to repair windows or, in severe cases, reimage the workstation. Reimaging ensures a clean start by reinstalling the operating system, removing any lingering malware or corrupted files that might be causing the ongoing issues. If the system is experiencing sluggish performance, it may be due to high CPU usage, limited RAM, or software issues. Start by rebooting the system to clear temporary files and reset memory usage. Next, open Task Manager to view resource utilization, identify any processes consuming excessive resources, and stop or restart those processes as needed. If performance remains slow, consider adding resources, such as increasing the system's RAM, to better handle demanding tasks. Additionally, uninstall unnecessary applications that may be consuming resources in the background. Running a system file check can also identify and repair corrupted system files that may be contributing to performance issues. When the system displays a warning for low memory, it usually indicates a memory leak or excessive resource consumption. A memory leak occurs when an application fails to release memory it no longer needs, causing the system to run out of available memory over time. Start by rebooting the system to clear temporary memory use and monitor background processes in Task Manager. Identify any applications consuming excessive memory and uninstall, reinstall, or update them to see if that resolves the issue. If the problem persists, consider increasing the system's available memory. You can do this by adding physical RAM to handle more tasks simultaneously or by increasing virtual memory, which allows the system to use part of the hard drive as additional memory. USB controller resource warnings occur when there are conflicts or limitations in the system's ability to allocate resources to connected USB devices. These warnings may arise from too many USB devices competing for limited resources, outdated drivers, hardware limitations, or even using an unpowered USB hub, which cannot provide enough power to all connected devices. To troubleshoot USB controller resource warnings, start by rebooting the system. This can clear temporary conflicts and reset resource allocation. After rebooting, open Device Manager and look for errors or warning symbols related to USB controllers or devices. If issues are found, update the USB drivers to ensure they're compatible and functioning correctly. Next, check whether the system's hardware meets the requirements for the connected USB devices, as older systems may struggle to handle multiple or high-demand USB devices. In such cases, try to reduce the number of connected devices to see if performance improves. Using an unpowered USB hub can also contribute to resource conflicts, so consider switching to a powered USB hub, which provides its own power supply and can better handle multiple devices. If the issue persists, consider adding a separate USB controller card to the system to provide additional USB ports and resources. When Windows services fail to start, it can impact system functions and applications that depend on those services. Start troubleshooting by opening the services utility, where you can view and manage services. Locate the affected service and try to restart it. If it fails to respond or stops immediately, it could be due to compatibility issues caused by recent updates. If restarting doesn't work, next you can try to roll back recent updates that might be affecting the service. Sometimes updates can conflict with services, leading to failures. Additionally, check if the service has sufficient privileges to run. Some services require administrative rights or specific user accounts to function properly. As a last measure, consider repairing Windows using recovery tools. When applications are crashing frequently, it often indicates software conflicts, corrupted files, or compatibility issues. Start by checking for any recent patches or updates that might have been installed before the crashes began, as they could be introducing conflicts or bugs. To troubleshoot, roll back updates one at a time, testing the application after each rollback to identify if a particular update is causing the issue. If the problem persists, try uninstalling and reinstalling the application to replace any corrupted files or settings. If a user's profile loads slowly, 
try to determine if the issue is user-specific or system-wide. If it is user-specific, it could be caused by a user profile containing corrupted files, excessive startup programs, or profile misconfigurations. Corrupted files within the user profile can slow down the loading process, as the system may struggle to read or access the necessary data. Similarly, having too many startup programs tied to a user profile can significantly delay the login process, as these programs attempt to launch all at once during login. To address this, first, review the startup items associated with the user's profile. Disabling unnecessary startup programs can improve login times and reduce the load on the system. If this step does not fully resolve the issue, it's likely that the user profile has become corrupted or misconfigured. In this case, rebuilding the Windows profile is often the most effective solution. This process involves creating a new user profile, which eliminates corrupted data and provides a clean slate. The new profile typically results in faster loading times and improved overall performance for the user, as it starts fresh without any lingering issues from the old profile. Finally, let's address time drift, which occurs when the system clock falls out of sync with the real time. While this may sound trivial, it can lead to a variety of issues. The system clock plays a critical role in maintaining the accuracy and integrity of time-dependent processes, such as verifying website certificates, coordinating with authentication servers, and synchronizing with other systems. When time drift happens, it can cause problems like invalid certificates, failed authentication attempts, and errors when connecting to network resources. The most common causes of time drift include network connectivity issues, misconfigured time settings, or interrupted synchronization with a time server. To begin troubleshooting, reboot the system and check that the date and time settings are correct. Pay special attention to the time zone, as incorrect settings here can also cause time-related errors. Persistent time drift may require further action, such as restoring the system to a previous point to undo recent changes that could be affecting the clock. If the issue still isn't resolved, you might need to repair Windows to address deeper system file issues that impact timekeeping. By addressing each of these common symptoms step by step, you can troubleshoot and resolve a variety of Windows OS problems. Of course, this isn't the complete list for every issue you might encounter. Each problem could have its own quirky twists, but these troubleshooting steps will certainly get you started and headed in the right direction. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.